I was recently given a pair of MetaQuest controllers to take a look at. They were both suffering from significant stick drift. It was actually quite an easy fix, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. Okay, so having previously dealt with Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons and Xbox Series S and the X controllers and PS5 controllers and more that suffer with stick drift, I hadn't actually encountered these MetaQuest controllers before. I don't have one of those VR headsets, but those controls use an analog stick, so I figured it would be the same sort of fix. So stick drift for the uninitiated is where the controller appears to have a mind of its own. It will have some sort of interference where it won't center back in the middle when you stop moving it, and if you let go it will move in one particular direction either up or across or even both uh, hence the name drift it will feel like the movement is just drifting in a particular direction and when you are trying to get control over a game it can be very frustrating but thankfully in the case of these MetaQuest controllers it's quite a quick and easy fix all you need is some electrical contact cleaner and a bit of patience so I had two controllers each one has its own thumbstick and a selection of buttons so to fix the drift you need to clean the joystick component itself this is is covered with a plastic cap which in turn is covered with the control panel overlay on the controller itself that's the darker colored disc so what we need to do is remove that circular control panel remove the cap from the joystick clean the insides and reassemble it all so first of all you need to remove the battery cover which I actually found quite tricky you need to sort of slide it downwards slightly uh, on the first one I did I got in there with a fingernail but a separator tool might be a little easier with the battery cover removed you can then take out the battery and if you look at that control panel at the top there's an area at the side that's now exposed where we can get into the gap and separate it from the main controller I did this with a separator tool just kind of get into the gap give a little bit of a wiggle until a connector which is about halfway across that area area pops apart. So the panel's held in place with three separate clips that are evenly spaced and one of them is in the middle of this exposed area. If you gently push a separator tool between the two parts of plastic, give it a little bit of a wiggle, you'll eventually lift and pop off that first connector. Then what I found is you don't want to lift and lever it off because you don't want to break anything. You want to lift it upwards rather than off like that because you, you if you're levering it off you might end up snapping parts on the other side so in order to lift it a little more carefully what you do is when that first part has popped open get a finger into the gap and just lift it slightly move your separator tool over into the bit where it comes together a little bit more of a wiggle and it'll lift it away move your finger across lift a bit more and gradually work your way around to one side until one connector pops and then in the other direction towards the other side to pop that one off. Once all three are unclipped, that control overlay will just lift off and expose the buttons and the thumbstick underneath. The thumbstick cap then needs removing. This will simply pull off the stick, but be careful. The stick has a small spring on there, which is a capacitive spring. This is part of how the controller works. So you don't want to remove that, just the plastic cap. So just get a firm grip on the thumbstick, firm grip on the controller with the other hand and just carefully pull firmly until that comes off and as soon as you feel it disengage just slow it down so you make sure you don't bring the spring with it then you've got that joystick exposed and that's where this stuff comes in so essentially what I did was I moved the stick in one direction and separated out the uh, coil of the spring to make a bit of a gap briefly sprayed into that gap wiggled the stick around a little bit and then did the same over on the other side of the stick to make sure it gets into all of those gaps. You don't need to spray loads, just two little quick sprays was all I did and uh, it worked absolutely fine. You'll need to give it a little bit of time to dry off but this stuff does evaporate very quickly so you shouldn't need to leave it to dry for long. In the case of this one I had two controllers to do so while I was waiting for the first one to dry I went on to the second one. I was a little more clued up as to how to get the battery cover off this time I just went straight in with a separator tool it was dead easy. Also, I knew where those clips would be. If you're doing two controllers like I was doing here, it's worth looking at the part you removed from the first controller to try and figure out where the clips will be on the second. Again, once the battery cover's removed, put your separator tool in the gap, give a wiggle and pop apart that middle one, and then work your way around each side again, separating the layers, get the separator tool into the gap, give a wiggle, work your way around and pop the other two off. That top panel will lift off. On the second one, the cap removed from the joystick much more easily and left the spring in place. But again, move the joystick over to one side, get it into the gap between the springs, a small spray on one side, bit of a wiggle, in the other side repeat the same and that should be fine well I was hoping it would be fine and it turns out that it was when it was tested afterwards so once that is done and cleaned up leave it for a little while to dry make sure it's completely dry because when you're reassembling you're kind of sealing it all up again so there's nowhere for those you know that liquid to 
evaporate. So leave it open for a little while, let it dry off. So at this point, it was time to reassemble. So I went to the first one again. And before you put that top control panel on, you need to put the thumbstick cap on. It's got like a, a slot that's the same shape as the stick. So it won't just go on any way around. It goes a particular way around. Line up the hole with the stick push it down, give it a nice firm push, but obviously not too forceful. And then take your control panel, line that up over the top and push down to clip the connectors in place. If one of them is lifted up slightly, it will go. It, it'll feel like you may be forcing it, but just some firm pressure until you feel that click and it'll sit securely in place. There is, on the first time you remove it, there is a bit of adhesive holding it in place as well, but I didn't find like I, I needed to add any glue or anything like that. Those three clips, Held it perfectly well. Once that top panel is on, just wiggle the stick around a little bit, make sure everything moves freely. If it feels a little bit stiff, you might not have pushed the thumbstick cap down firmly enough. So just check everything moves all right. And then with the other one, it was just the same. I took the thumbstick cap, slid it down onto the stick, got the control panel, aligned it correctly, applied pressure at the three points where the clips are and popped it all back together. And that's it, it's nice and easy. No real specific fancy screwdrivers or anything like that needed. Not any involved level of disassembly. This is something that you might need to repeat every now and again. I don't think it'll be a permanent fix. I think when any, you know, either when the controller dries out a bit or when more dust gets in there or anything like that, it might start to drift off a little bit more. But yeah, I think it was fairly straightforward. I passed them back. Turns out when they were tested, they worked perfectly. It was just like new. So if you've got these controllers and that's causing you grief, then uh, that's definitely an easy fix that I recommend you might want to try out. I'll leave a link for this stuff in the description, um, but any electrical contact cleaner should be fine. Now, sadly, this is not the first time I've experienced stick drift on a controller, not even the second or third time. It seems to be quite prevalent. And I am in the process of putting together an overall video about this phenomenon, why we're having to put up with it, and what are the easiest ways of dealing with it. But in the meantime, I've made a few videos about various different controllers. I'll link a few of these on here for you to have a look at after you've watched this. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.